We're looking at a circuit here, which has an inductor, a couple of resistors, a battery, and the currents are flowing in this direction at first. The little switch is open. And we're going to be asked a couple of questions about these. Um, at first, we're going to close the switch, disconnect it, and then we're going to see what happens immediately after that, just at time equals zero, two currents one and two. It'll be these guys. Well, the inductor's job in the beginning is to basically stop the flow of current through there. So the current through the inductor is going to be zero. And because the current in the inductor is zero, that means that the current here is also zero. So whenever we turn it on, we have this, um, you know, this I equals epsilon over R formula, it's Ohm's law. So we can use that because immediately after we start this, uh, that's what the current's going to be in I1. We'll use the calculator real quick. And we'll just say 137, that's the battery, divided by the resistance. And we're looking at the resistance of this particular circuit right in here. And we're basically ignoring that right half for now. This stuff has no current, so... You can cover that up. Now ask yourself, what's the resistance in here? It's actually the total resistance of both of those. So we're going to add 14.3 plus 21.1. And so the current through this whole section is actually going to be uh, this, which is um, 3.87 amps. And because I2 is a part of this whole thing, those are actually going to be the exact same. So 3.87 amps is correct for both of those. Um, it's almost as if this didn't exist. And those are both I1s. Okay, so now we're looking at the fully charged. Once the time has reached infinite and these things have sort of settled themselves out and, um, and, and we have the D over DT being equal to di over dt being equal to zero, that's the change of current. Uh, at some point, once time is infinity, the change of current is going to be zero. Everything's going to be settled down. Um, so we're going to ask yourself, what is the current through I1? And what's the current through I2? Well, this question is a little bit harder because, well, we can ask ourselves, what is the EMF through the inductor at that point, because we know it's supposed to be D, T, I, um, times the inductance, okay? But because D, I over D, T is zero, that doesn't really matter what the inductance is. Um, the epsilon, or the, um, the EMF here, is still going to be zero. So the EMF is zero once the thing is fully charged. Because the EMF is zero, now we can create two Kirchhoff loops in here. Um, so the first Kirchhoff loop would be something like this, and the other one will be something like this. Um, so I'll set up this one first, and we're going to go epsilon, starts there. We're going to go this way, and we're going to go um, IR minus IR, so uh, 14.3 times I1. And then here we're going to subtract um, the IR again, so 21.1 I2, and that's going to be equal to zero. And then on this side, I know that's going to be equal to zero. That's not even going to be included into my Kirchhoff loop. So I know that basically um, it doesn't really matter where I could start here. I'll go plus on this side, so we'll go... 21.1 I2, this direction, and then this way, the current should be going this way. It's I3 over here. So we're now going to subtract um, 39.4 I3. It's basically a new, there's a new current in here, right? And we also have the expression that we know that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So I can even move I1 plus Sorry, I1 minus I2 equals I3. And that's what I'll use over here. Um, so this is supposed to equal to zero, but I can basically just set those two things equal to each other. And then I'll plug in I1 minus I2 
times 39.4. So I'll basically be able to move the I2 over there and I'll get um, 21.1 plus 39.4 would be 60.5 I2 equaling 39.4 I1. And I can just kind of divide this to be able to answer the I1 question. Well, we don't really know what I2 is yet, so can't answer that whole way yet. But let's head over here. Because I can say that I1 is equal to all of this, right? So I'll just put epsilon, um, I guess I'll just move all this to the other side. So that's gonna be equal to 60.5 I2 divided by 39.4 times 14.3, that's I1 right there, right? And then this will be plus whatever is left over here, 21.1 I2. So now I can combine those together and actually calculate for I2. So it'll be something more like 60.5 times 14.3 divided by 39.4. And then I'll even add 21.1 to that. So I got all this. That's times I2. And what's the EMF or the uh, voltage there? It's 137 divided by whatever I got for the answer. So I'll find that I2 is equal to 3.18 amps. Around there. So that's going to help because now, um, I mean, that's the answer for I2, 3.18A. And we can basically just uh, multiply that by 60.5 and divide that by 39.4. And that should give us I1, which is 4.89 or so. Okay, this is good. Now we're going to reopen the switch, which means that the connection here is going to be lost. And that means that the current here is just going to go away. So that's going to go on. Bam. Meaning this, uh, this one here is going to be zero. And the problem is, though, that we have this thing going on over here still. Well, the whole point of this inductor thing is to kind of prevent such sudden changes of current. So the current is actually going to continue flowing on this side at the same speed at the very beginning. Um, so uh, the problem is, though, if this is gone. And let's remember what direction I3 was running. I3 was running in this direction. So I2 doesn't really count anymore. So let's just kind of get rid of that. And now let's realize that I3 is it's flowing in this direction. So it would be going this way. Um, but it's not going to be called I3. It's still called I2 because we're looking at it from this perspective. But because it's the opposite direction, it's going to be negative. So that's okay. And essentially, remember what I1 was. I1 was this. I remember I2 was um, like this over here. But... We have this equation, so really what we're saying is 4.89 minus 3.18. That's going to give you the current that was running on this side in I3. So instead of putting positive 1.7, I have to put negative because it's going in this direction. But that's going to be what I2 is essentially going to do. It is it's going to take the property of I3 because, um, well, if I1 is gone then guess what? I2 equals I3. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, this is interesting stuff. And now we'll head over to the final thing. When it is fully discharged, the T is infinite, everything is going to be zero. So we've lost all current and all charges. And that's kind of the answer to that. <laughs> so that's a pretty complicated stuff. It shows you how inductors work.